Today we hosted the Stuart Custer Lecture Series that our seminary does every year. And this year, our speaker was Dr. Andy Nacelli. Andy's been a good friend over the years, graduated from our seminary with a PhD, went on to Trinity Evangelical Divinity School for a second PhD, uh, and now is part of the faculty at the Bethlehem College and Seminary, and I think you're an elder there as well. And Andy came to speak to us on the topic of conscience, and particularly conscience and politics. politics. Yeah. Question for you, Andy, how did you come up with that topic? What was sort of the context yeah. for that? So the, when you all invited me to come down, you asked me to speak on the conscience because I, I co-authored a book on the conscience. And I thought, well, I'd love to apply this to a more particular area because I've already written on it and I'd like to explore another area. And this area is particularly relevant to pastoral ministry right now, especially in light of the political season that's coming around the corner in 2020. So I wanted to explore how should Christians think about politics and how they relate to fellow church members when they disagree. And as a pastor, I mm -hmm. can tell you that that mm -hmm. really does happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that you're getting ready to do it in a mm -hmm. context of your own assembly, mm -hmm. but it was a great blessing to us as Thank we you. heard you speak to, uh, to our seminary. And I think we had about 100 outside guests that came today. Tell me a little bit about sort of the framework of what you did today. You kind of asked three overarching mm -hmm. questions and maybe you could frame sure. up uh, those questions for us. The, the main question I started with was, why, why is it that Christians passionately disagree with each other over politics? So just why? And it really came down to Christians care about justice. They're, they're justified people. God is mm -hmm. God of justice. And what happens is Christians can feel very strongly that they rightly perceive the most just political uh, solution to various problems. And if someone disagrees, uh, they think they're wrong and they want to share that. So that, that's just some of the why mm -hmm. that's happening. And then I asked, not just why is it happening, but uh, why must Christians uh, who disagree on jagged line political issues agree to disagree? So I had to define what is a jagged line mm -hmm. uh, issue. But basically, a straight line issue is when it goes straight from Bible says something to how you apply it in a policy. Like, don't murder, uh, and then abortion would be evil. That's a straight line. There are other issues where it's more complicated, uh, like we should uh, care for the stranger and we should protect our children. Uh, biblical impulses, how do you apply that to immigration policy? Uh, there's so many factors to consider. I don't think we can speak of there being the Christian immigration policy. So as a pastor, I, I'm willing to say God forbids abortion. I'm not willing to say that a particular immigration policy is pro-God or anti-God, like the only right way. Okay, I could say one has evil elements to it. So it's just, I'm just trying to say jagline issues are more complicated. And Christians who disagree on those issues should have, have charity and, and leave room, leeway for Christian freedom. And so I asked, so how do you, how do, you, how do, you do that? And I suggested ways like allowing leeway, uh, focusing on the mission of the church, and then prioritizing love. So let me ask you one final question yeah. sort of as we wrap up. Uh, as a believer, uh, I'm, I'm listening to how you define jagged line and straight line and really appreciated the fact that my conscience is related to justice. Mm -hmm. So how do I inform my conscience? What are some practical mm -hmm. ways that I can inform my conscience on an issue mm -hmm. so that I'm, I'm sure I'm actually operating within the boundaries of, of what the Bible has to say about my conscience? Well, primarily you want to educate your conscience with truth, primarily truth from Scripture. Also, it's true throughout side of Scripture. Uh, there are a lot of issues that, uh, that are complicated and factoring in like st statistics and, and look at economic policies and that, that effect on people. Like, like I'm thinking of immigration. Uh, you you, know, you want to ask, so what's the number of migrants and asylum seekers we should let into our country? What number? What would be most wise? How would that affect uh, the, the, the jobs, economic f uh, factors for people in our country? Mm -hmm. How, there's, there's so many things to work through that... Uh, there's not the Christian position. Uh, so you want to educate yourself with truth, uh, primarily from Bible and truth outside the Bible. And, and then you want to do it in the context of a local church. So we don't have to do this alone. We don't have to isolate ourselves. We have scripture, we have the Holy Spirit, we have the church community. So don't do it alone. And then give it time. Some, some issues are so complex and so embedded in our consciences that we don't want to rush to make a change. Uh, give it time. Wendy, thank yeah. you for taking your day with us. Pleasure. Uh, I know that some of the information that even we've talked about in this brief interview will be very helpful to many believers and to churches. And Andy, I think you're actually working on a book on this. Is that correct? 
I did just co-author one with Jonathan Lehman that should come out in early 2020 on how you can love your fellow church member when you disagree on political matters. I forget the exact title. And we just authored, co-authored a more academic article that should come out in about May 2020. Well, thank you, and I know that'll be a great blessing to the church. Let me encourage you uh, to pray for Andy and for his ministry. We're thankful that he was able to be with us here at the Stuart Custer Lecture Series.